Overpacking is kind of uh, something that goes hand in hand with long motorcycle adventures. And it's not something that's limited to new people getting into this. Even someone who's traveled for more than 20 years on a motorcycle such as myself, I'm guilty of doing the same thing. The only excuse I have or thing I would say is that I did perhaps pack a lot of things that I thought would be useful in creating the videos, like my tarp and my hammock and things like that that, that could be useful and they would make for a nice and different and unique looking campsite. Those items in particular haven't really been used as much as I wanted. And so I sent some things like that home. I started this trip out with a Rainfly tarp and my hammock. The tent, I can get it set up and use it anywhere, rain or shine, wind, it doesn't matter. The hammock requires trees or some kind of support. You generally have to have good weather. It can't be too cold at night unless you have some kind of a thermal insulation under the hammock, which I don't have. And so it's really a lot harder to use and more limited use. And so I sent the hammock and the rain tarp back home. It really just comes back to the basics, especially when you're motorcycle camping, because you have limited amount of space. And the more things you carry, the more things you have to worry about, the more difficult it is to ride your motorcycle, to pack your gear, etc. And so for me, it just really does come back time and time again to the basics. And honestly, for me, it's just a tent, an air mattress, and a sleeping bag. I'm trying to simplify things, and it's a much more simplistic, stripped down, minimal approach that I'm going for. I'm looking for flow. I want my days to be filled with the flow of motorcycling, finding good places to spend the night, eating well, and I know it's possible because I've quite often in my life experienced that. And it's only now for the first time that I've been on Vancouver Island for a few days that I sort of feel like it's coming back and like I'm finding that flow that I've been looking for. All right, today we've got a special thing to do. We're gonna go into Bamfield. In order to get there, you have to take a water taxi. So I'm gonna have to park the bike on one side of the bay and take a little water boat to get to the other side to see the town of Bamfield. So let's go check it out. So when I got up this morning, I drove into East Bamfield on my motorcycle, went down to the harbor, beautiful little harbor, sailboats and fishing boats and docks and piers a really charming little seaside community on this, this inlet. The gas station there is quite interesting. It's, it's not like any gas station that I've normally encountered. You drive up and you have to ring a bell and then the attendant walks over from her house and fills up my motorcycle. Good travels. Thank you. This is a small, isolated community on the western side of Vancouver Island. I spent the afternoon exploring this little community and I want to tell you all about it. I parked my motorcycle in East Bamfield and then walked down on the dock to where the water taxi departs and called them up and then a lady came over in a boat and picked me up and drove me across the inlet over to where I'm at now. And it was about a 10 minute ride. It cost $10 Canadian. A very pleasant ride, a nice way to see some of the seaside homes and docks. And She dropped me off um, on the other side next to the general store. And this is one of those kind of old time general stores. They had food and beer and some fresh vegetables, ice cream, things like that. There's some tourists running around, and but pretty um, small scale. Not a lot of people out here. It's really, really my kind of town. And then I discovered their boardwalk. And this boardwalk meanders along the edge of the water here. And then on the other side are people's homes and yards and, and a couple of little businesses. And the thing that I liked about it is that it really changed along the way. At one point, you'd be walking on a boardwalk and then it would turn into a path meandering through the forest. And there was artwork and big, giant old trees and then you'd pop out of the forest and you'd be on a path. And that path might go through somebody's front yard. And then it would go back to the boardwalk. 
and it just went on and on like this. I walked for about 20 minutes down this boardwalk. And at the end of the boardwalk, or at least as far as I went, I found a cafe. And they only have one thing on the menu. It changes every day, but there's, they just make one thing. And today it was a, a pastrami sandwich. A very nice place to just relax, take in the scenery. And I really like the vibe of this place a lot. This is very small scale, intimate, kind of an isolated but beautiful community. But it seems to be doing well, and it certainly has just an abundance of charm. So if, if you ever are out on the western coast of Vancouver Island and you want to get a little bit more remote and drive down some dirt roads to get to a, a very unique place, I would definitely check out Bamfield. Well, I hope that you enjoyed that short, quick tour of Bamfield as much as I did. It's been a delight to spend a day up here camping out at the campground by the ocean and then taking the water taxi over to the west side of Bamfield. Now I'm back on the road and I'm going to head across the island through Port Alberni. And as usual, I have no idea what this road will be like or what I'll find along the way, especially in the way of camping or campgrounds. I have a full tank of gas. I have a little bit of food. I have some water and my water filter, so I pretty much have what I need to take care of myself. I'm not particularly relishing the idea of wild camping up here on the island where there's so many bears. I've already seen three bears on this trip in the last several days, so I'm not quite sure. I just want to spend the night all by myself in my tent in some kind of wild camping scenario. So stick with me and let's see what happens. So this is what the roads look like on this part of the drive. It's a big, wide gravel road, pretty smooth, but it's really dusty. I got stuck behind a couple of cars and had to pass them because the dust was just choking me out. And I couldn't see anything. The surface is a little bit slippery. Sometimes there's some granular rocks on the top or some sand, so I can't go too fast. The trees on the side of the road are all covered in dust. They're kind of silver gray instead of the the lush green forest that they would normally be they're just covered in dust and i'm navigating by my garmin zumo i set a waypoint for a town on the other side of the island and it's routing me and i also checked on my phone with google maps and it kind of had the same route so i'm assuming that this is the the main road there has to be a main road out to banfield and back some sort and this is it i think it's a pretty rugged road potholed and washboarded it's not a very smooth sailing comfortable gravel road more the kind of road that just feels like it's putting a lot of abuse on your machine and on your body it's just very bumpy and challenging in that way and so not particularly fun to ride in the sense of just smooth and flowy and this is a little construction area here but this leads me to believe that this would not be a popular sport bike or cruiser touring destination it's a kind of a uh, adventure touring destination really which is kind of cool i like the fact that you can really only get out to bamfield on roads like this keeps the town relatively isolated from the rest of the world i'm not sure if they enjoy that but i certainly do well i'm back in the land of traffic and cars now i just went past port alberni so i'm about halfway across the island heading over to the east side and back on the pavement but i am approaching the east coast of vancouver island so i should be able to wrap today's ride up uh, on the other other side of the island for me personally i find it a lot easier to camp in the back country than i do in a situation like this because when i'm traveling through an area that's kind of developed like this you're limited to either public campgrounds and rv parks or else you end up in a motel or a hotel or something like that. When I'm traveling way out in the back country, camping is just readily available. And it might not be a campground, and, and that's quite often okay. I like to wild camp, but you can, in the back country, just pull off on the side of the road and basically be by yourself and have a, a nice, free, legal place to camp. And that's not always the case um, wherever you may travel. We'll find a place to camp here, right down by the water. Where is the office? Maybe that's it right there. Well, I'm in luck. They have a site for me. She was really friendly. It only cost $20 Canadian. And I'm just glad that I found this place because I was starting to despair a little bit, thinking that I was gonna end up in a, a motel and kind of an urban area. Not what I was really 
looking forward to. This is a camping trip, eh? So let's uh, stick to the camping when we can. All right, this looks promising. We're right down by the water here, but yet up in the woods. Ooh, look at these trees. Wow, that's a giant there. Holy cow, what a lovely campground. It's one of the best I've ever seen. And we have arrived. Well, I can't tell you how happy this makes me to have found this beautiful campsite right next to the water here, but yet in the forest, at this time of night, an affordable price, I'll take it. I didn't score one of the beachfront campsites, but beggars can't be choosers. And the trees, so big. Right now, I'm just gonna unwind, crack open my hydro flask with a little bit of cold lager that I filled it up with before I rolled out here. I brought some dinner with me. I'm gonna set my tent up, my camp, and then have a really good dinner.